hi everyone and welcome back this is my second video on the aws track and uh, as we decided that we are going to talk about uh, aws quiz for cloud practitioner exam so here we are let's get started so in aws there are like uh, 100 i mean 200 plus services and uh, cloud practitioner cloud practitioner talks about getting familiar with all those services which are divided in our different categories if we talk about any cloud vendors then cloud vendor provider services which are divided into software as a service platform as a service uh, infrastructure as a service or function as a service or backend as a service all these categories are there and here i'm not teaching uh, about uh, aws services what aws is and all aws is a cloud vendor and providing us all these services so we can either use the aws platform to deploy our application or either we just use aws platform and we just take our application node.js and react code and we deploy it or just simply use a, a, we just write our code as a functions rest deployment and running our application our application is in the hands of aws services so these are divided in the infrastructure as a code platform as a as a service infrastructure as a service or a function as a service or backend as a service okay there are wide variety of these services and for practitioner certification exam getting familiar with these services are important what is the use of s3 what is the elastic beanstalk uh, what is the use of ecs what is the ec2 uh, these are divided into multiple categories right aws compute aws storage aws networking and aws uh, you can say ci cd and all aws security and all so if you talk about some services like aws ecs container service right elastic beanstalk which is an example of uh, providing a platform you just need to deploy your application by zipping up the code aws lambda where you are just just writing your functions that's it you are you don't need to worry about deployment or anything else elastic load balancing which is you can compare it with simple nginx proxy which is balancing your traffic to your uh, node.js instance aws cloudfront so it's like a cdn tool to make your application available globally with caching and all right aws kinesis for the streaming is aws route 53 to provide a dns and a routing for your web app aws dynamo db it's like a no sql database aws rds where you are actually where you can create your database oracle aurora or rds mysql postgres all these database elastic cache you might have heard about redis so it's a managed service provided by aws image and sqs you might be familiar with uh, RabbitMQs and all. So it's a managed service provided by Amazon, simple queuing service, simple notification service, SNS, for sending messages to, a, like sometimes you want to send an email message or you want to deliver a message to some HTTP endpoint or some SQS, then you can just publish that message to the topic. So it's a SNS. Then auto scaling, your application is growing big. So AWS provides this auto scaling service where you can scale up and down. AWS API Gateway, you might have heard about APZ or Zool as API Gateway or Kong. So AWS API Gateway, which will be the entry point for your services. Simple email service, SES, Cognito, to provide a, it's like a federated authentication provider like which provides you the user pool to manage the like you can compare it with the uh, firebase or auth zero but it is super set of it i am identity access management cloud watch to watch on everything it provides you the logging of lambdas logging of different services system manager to manage the the system level configuration cloud formation which is uh, infrastructure as a service you just provide your uh, infrastructure as a code in the yml files cloud formation will orchestrate everything and give you your ec2 instance load balancers everything created cloud trail which will monitor your whatever the the resources you are creating updating deleting on all these things it keeps a trail on all the resources code commit build deploy pipeline these are the part of ci cd okay aws kms key management service like uh, you want uh, to sometimes key encryption for your resources for your data communication which is in the network like in and out data you want encryption on that data so you can use kms okay there are 
hundreds of these services available on AWS and getting familiar with these is our primary agenda. So my questions will be based on um, what kind of EC2 instance you need, like reserved instance, port instance, what kind of, uh, what are what are the different categories of uh, computes available, right? How you, how, what all different platforms in which you can deploy your application. So all these questions are for cloud practitioner and here we can start with that. Okay. Here we are talking about uh, simple, simple questions. Okay. Which of these characteristics of the pricing model used in the cloud? So pay as you go and trade capital expenditure. Okay. So pay as you go and these are the two options. That is correct. We can move to the next question. What is which of these advantage of moving to the cloud? That is uh, okay. Plan to buy infrastructure ahead of time. No, no need to plan ahead of time. Provision infrastructure as your need evolves. That is the advantage of moving to the cloud. So there is a timer. If you are not able to answer this question, that is fine. It will give you the right answer because it's a 30 second timer. So if you are not able to answer, it will just put that. Okay, this is the correct answer and rest all are incorrect. Okay, because of compliance requirement, your application can only be deployed in a single geographic location. Which of this option you will consider to increase availability for your application? So deploy EC2 instance in a single availability zone, multiple. Av so it's like we still have a single region, so we can choose multiple availability zones. Okay, that is correct which of the benefit of the cloud you don't need to worry about security you don't need to worry about okay select two okay yeah increase agility so trade capital capital expense for variable expenses now you need to worry about you don't need to worry about the infrastructure and all for the data center you can choose a particular services and your expenditure or your cost will go for those services only which of these are managed database service in AWS? So AWS RDS and AWS DynamoDB, these two are the managed services. Which of these is easy to use AWS service for deploying and scaling web application? So, so if you remember, AWS provide platform as a service, which is elastic being talk. So here you just need to zip your code and deploy your application. Which of the service will you use to run event-driven workload in AWS? So, okay. ECS is a container service. Forget Lambda. I'm not pretty much sure about it. So giving a just cache. Okay, this is not correct. So AWS Lambda is serverless compute that can be used to run your event-driven workload. Event-driven means you're not running the whole service all the time. There is some event and that will execute on a particular duration right so lambda is like a serverless and you are paying for only whenever you are executing so lambda is the perfect answer for it which of this is virtual firewall to control incoming and outgoing traffic from aws resources security group we use security group to to say okay these are these ports and these ips can communicate so incoming rules we configure which do you go for EC2 support instances? Okay, I think yes, this would be workloads are okay. There are two answers A and E. When I'm missing critical batch program, can't be interrupted. Which of this option would you choose? So on demand instance cannot be stopped, support instance is frequently stopped, reserved instance for the longer duration not sure about it yeah on support instance request when you want it flexible and most expensive immediate workloads it can handle and can't be interrupted that is the characteristics when you want to reserve a compute capacity in aws to reduce the cost you need a flexibility and all okay which of the following option you will choose saving plans it's uh okay so on demand instance so these are uh, so when you spin up a new EC2 instance, uh, you always have these options. Okay, you what what kind of instance you want? On demand, spot instance, reserved instance, saving plans. So this is most of these questions uh, moves around this. Okay, if you there is a particular use case, what kind of instance you need? Spot instance, reserved instance, or on demand or saving plans, right? So 
you should be uh, familiar about what these instances are when you need what right reserved instances ahead of time like you, when you are planning for the longer duration one two three years right and there is a payment option either you can make upfront payment or you can do a partial payments and all these things which of these represent a horizontal scaling horizontal scaling means you are just increasing the number of instances, not increasing the capacity of a single instance okay that's correct when deploying application to ec2 instance which of the following is a customer responsible for so on the aws infrastructure there is a shared model right aws is providing you the infrastructure now rest of the configurations and security like i am managing the im rules and all are the customer responsibility so okay which which of the following is a customer responsible for configuring physical infrastructure hardware and networking is aws responsibility security oh we are delayed so customer is responsible for guest operating system patches application code and runtime availability and scalability this we are responsible for aws is responsible for networking uh, hypervisor support uh, host operating system and in i mean networking hardware infrastructure that is what aws is responsible for rest uh, putting the con uh, security on top of the host operating system applying patches uh, deploying your installing your the application software like java node.js and all and deploying your application is customer's responsibility okay how do you distribute data in amazon rds across multiple availability zones so you can create a read replica that is correct compared to the master database create read replica in same availability zone create a multi ag deployment with a standby database so these two should be okay I mean, Amazon RDS is managed service from AWS. You can create either Postgres, MySQL, MariaDB, Oracle database. And for multi ag deployment, you can actually create a multi ag setup and you can create read replicas cross region. Okay, which of these is a storage service in AWS? Storage service is EBS, Elastic Block Storage and Elastic File System. So EC2 or EC2 is a compute, all the other services like Amazon CloudFront is for caching, ELBs for elastic load balancing, highly durable object storage service in AWS, obviously S3. Which of this can be used to create a file share to share file between multiple EC2 instances? So we talked about there are two options, EBS and EFS, but uh, which of this can we create a file chat EFS? You need to share archive for 20 years for regulatory compli compliance for if you want to store things for the lowest cost or for longer duration. S3 class Glacier is helpful for it. Which of the S3 storage class does not provide immediate access to the data? frequent access immediate access okay choose to so glacier obviously and deep archive they are they are used for longer duration where you don't need a frequent access glacier and deep archive which of these option is recommended for moving hundreds of terabyte of data from on premises to aws so snowball is a service snowmobile is a truck we know that snowball okay these are like very basic questions if you know uh, if you have gone through the practitioner course anywhere on the web then you should be able to answer which database service is used to create aws managed mysql rds let's do these quickly then used to aws managed oracle database uh, rds quickly evolving application needing to support a millions of transactions per second so dynamo db can quickly evolve can scale because this is a managed service if you want a transactional processing also then you can use redshift petabyte of data okay redshift is there allow to run the queries against image and s3 without loading the data onto them okay this is uh, tr tricky and this this you will be able to answer if you have gone through the course so there is a redshift uh, spectrum is there which you should be able to use when you can query the data into S3 without loading it. Use for cache data for SQL queries, elastic cache like Redis or Memcached. 
your own isolated network in the AWS. So we use VPC. AWS gives you a default VPC in each and every region, but you can also create your own. Okay. A private subnet does not have a route to internet gateway because public subnet will have a route to internet gateway. Private subnet will have a route to net gateway or net instance. Which of the AWS managed service allows the instance of private subnet to download software patches while denying denying inbound traffic? So it should be net gateway or net instance. Okay, it's managed service. So managed service is net gateway, net instance. We manually create it. Which of the networking connections between VPC? So it's the VPC peering when you are communicating to a, from one VPC to another VPC. Which of these allow you to create a tunnel from VPC to on-premises encrypted communication? So it should be direct connect. Oh, AWS managed VPN. So it tunnels from VPC to on-premises. That is correct. It set up AWS managed VPN connectivity between on-premises and AWS. So it's customer gateway. Okay, which of these devices are used to set up AWS managed VPN connectivity? It should be VPN gateway and customer gateway. That is correct. Which of the IAM best practice to provide users with minimum access? They would need to be able to perform their duty. Which of these? I mean, the IAM best best practices always grant least privilege, least access, enable MFA for privileged users, strong policy, rotate security credentials regularly. I mean, lot of wish, lot of the things are lot of these options are correct okay okay we just need to select only one so obviously grant a list privilege for AWS user okay which of the IAM entities has a credential attached with it with AWS user username password and keys we have AWS users group and uh, AWS roles in IAM, which of these used to manage the permission of collection of users, AWS group. We can create a developer group, vendor group and all, which of these are not IAM best practices. Here I am credential, obviously this one and these two. We should not be using root user or anything. Which of these AWS services integrate with the uh, storage and database service in AWS. Uh, storage and database service. AWS Shield. Storage, okay. Oh, we are we are wrong here. So K KMS and Cloud HSM generates a store and use to replace the keys. So KMS is the correct answer here. Which of this AWS service can integrate with AWS Shield to protect your uh, DDoS attacks? So that is CloudFront and ELV because these are like front facing for your application. That is correct. Which of the AWS service can be used to protect your web application? So we can use WAF, specific geographic location. Okay, that is correct. Which of these is uh, this is a threat detection service that continuously monitor uh, malicious activity. So these all are actually AWS security, AWS guard duty, AWS WAF, AWS shield. The only thing is when you read and when you go through them, only slight differences. Uh, guard duty is actually tracks care, take care of your incoming traffic, check, uh, check for any malicious activity and all. which can be used to review, accept and manage your agreement with AWS. AWS artifact can be used to store your lot of documentation. So here we talk about Mac is fully managed data security service used. Uh, so what is the use of Mac? -E? I think it actually scan the S3 stories to identify any personal information or any private information we are not hiding there. Guard duty continuously monitors the AWS. AWS artifact self-service portal 
for uh, for storing aws compliance report and all aws security hub consolidated view of current status of aws security which of the aws services is recommended to track the change made to aws resources cloud tree okay i mean these are very basic and i have already gone through some set of questions so i'm able to easily answer because i have also gone through a practitioner uh, practitioner course uh, some time back which of the aws service is used to collect monitoring and operational data in form of log matrix and all so cloudwatch is good at it cloudwatch can do uh, cloudwatch actually logs and track all the services Track the request across different component in AWS service, AWS config, yes. Oh, sorry, X-ray. Yeah. So what X-ray does is uh, X-ray tracks your request to going from one component to another component. It it actually once when you are using multiple services and you want to track where where what is the status, then you can debug using X-ray. Which of the AWS services fully managed messaging queuing service SQS? allow you to reduce the latency for users by distributing content to edge locations that's cloudfront which of these option is recommended for efficiently deliver static content for low latency so we always use cloudfront and s3 buckets that is correct helps you to implement continuous integration in aws so continuous delivery and continuous integration for continuous integration you will be using quad build and code build and code pipeline which of the services fully managed ci service that help you to automate your release so that is code pipeline helps you to provision aws services which of the aws service help you to provision resources we use cloud formation you just provide yml it will provision all the resources for you Help you to simplify management of multiple accounts. AWS organizations is there, which is not a category check provided by a trusted advisor. So AWS trusted advisor do the optimization, performance, service limits. I think performance would be okay. Sorry, reliability. So AWS trusted advisor provides cost optimization, performance, security, fault tolerance, and all. So the correct answer is uh, reliability. Which of the service provide you with the cost optimization performance security? We just discussed about it. Trusted advisor. Analyze your cost, filter by region, and see the cost projection, AWS budget, cost explorer. This is tricky, right? Both are services. Budgets also show you region based, let's say, cost explorer. That's correct. Which of the AWS service help you to eliminate? Estimate the cost of your architecture solution in AWS. It should be pricing calculator and uh, cost explorer. Pricing calculator, I'm aware. Simply monthly calculator. Help you to automate common operational tasks such as stopping, starting EC2 instance. So there should be a system manager for it. Okay, your enterprise does not have in house AWS expertise. Which of these services can help you to do the cloud migration? So there are consultant partners, AWS partner network, okay, that will help you to do the cloud migration. So professional service or partner network will help you to do that. Help you to add authentication authorization, Cognito. So if you have gone through these, then these are very quick for you to answer these, which of these is AWS well architect framework pillars. Okay, security is there. Operation excellence, security, reliability, performance efficiency. Okay, security is there. Uh, okay, so the question is, which of this AWS Well Architect Framework Pillar focus on minimizing effort on the on the minimizing effort and problems with provisioning servers and deployment monitoring and support so operational excellence is the answer for it so these others are also uh, well architect framework like performance efficiency reliability 
and security which of this recommendation does not fall under the reliability pillar of AWS well architect framework okay maintain redundancy scale horizontally reliability means your application should be reliable and available principle is privileged for the least time it is correct this is not falling under that category security and compliance in aws is a shared responsibility of aws and a customer which of these will use to authenticate yourself to make programmatic call against aws services using cli access key and secret key i am user access key and secret key which of this is not responsibility of aws under a shared responsibility model controlled uh, controls based on the application ensuring the service s3 and so ensuring the up and running services or ensuring the infrastructure or it security standard that is all aws responsibility so this should be that okay that is correct which of the AWS support plan provide you 24 7 email support chat access to the cloud support engineers uh, I mean if you are paying it so enterprise and business should be that uh, final which of this AWS support plan is free of cost basic you do login and you add your credit card information you will get a one year subscription with some limitations that is correct and here we are done okay uh thanks everyone so i think we should be able to crack this because there were only uh, basic questions